dear students in this lecture we will discuss about clays uh, what are clays and uh, how they are useful in uh, organic synthesis uh, they can be used as catalyst in different organo uh, uh, organic compounds synthesis the particle size of the clay is less than 2 mm so uh, the clay particles uh, they are present in the soil and their size is less than 2 mm in diameter uh, they are generally sticky and plastic when moist so when they are uh, wet then they become sticky and plastic type and uh, when they are dry they have these kind of property they become hard and cohesive so this is the special quality of clays uh, as Uh, in the wet condition they become sticky and plastic and in the dry condition they become cohesive and hard they are generally uh, hydrous aluminous silicates okay so they are crystalline and hydrous they have water molecules generally uh, hydrous aluminous silicates with certain cations in their interlayer space we have already discussed about the montmorillonite i will again uh, show you the structure of montmorillonite where you have seen that uh, at the interlayer space water molecule and some cations like sodium and calcium are present in the uh, there okay uh, generally uh, clays can be divided into four main groups elite smectite vermiculite and kaolinite among which we have already studied the kaolinite and in the smectite we have studied the montmorillonite clay so these three clays elite smectite and vermiculite they are two is to one type clays where you will find that the layers of t tetrahedra octahedra and tetrahedra they are the repeating units so two tetrahedra and one octahedra so the ratio becomes 2 is to 1 okay while in case of kaolinite the layers are of to 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 tetrahedra octahedra tetrahedra octahedra so one tetrahedra one octahedra then after interlayer space was there then tetrahedra then octahedra so this is known as one is to one type clay while in these types uh, the uh, the ratio is to t the layer is two tetrahedra and one octahedra now if we see the properties uh, difference of the properties in among these clays then we will find that only the smectite clay is having the ex expanding quality all the other clays like elite vermiculite and kaolinite they are non expandable you have already studied about the kaolinite where you find that uh, the clay is non expandable okay so only the clay which is expandable is smectite so these smectite they are very important clays in organic synthesis and among these smectites we will study the montmorillonite clay so this smectite that is montmorillonite is a uh, is an important clay that is used as catalyst in various organic synthetic processes okay uh, it is a green uh, green catalyst uh, or in heterogeneous catalyst the most important thing is it is a heterogeneous catalyst and the reaction will takes place at the surface of the clays then it has good cation exchange capacity about which clay we are talking about we are talking about the montmorillonite clay this montmorillonite clay has good exchange and cation exchange capacity that is about 100 milliequivalent per 100 gram of clay so uh, this is ve very important uh, uh, characteristic of montmorillonite that its cec that is cation exchange capacity is very high effective surface area is about 600 to 800 meter square per gram because surface area is the uh, uh, is the backbone of catalyst so if the surface area is higher then uh, the catalytic uh, activity will be higher so uh, for montmorillonite the surface area is very large and uh, it's a special characteristic of this kind of clay is that on wetting these clays swells due to the entry of water molecules in the interlayers uh, the the in the layers of the montmorillonite they expand and thus the gap between the two layers that increases and 
it it increases the exchange of cations the cations are present at the interlayer spaces in montmorillo night and so due to the swelling of these clays the cations can easily be exchanged and so this is the very important a uh, part of these clays they have actually uh, the temporary porosity so if we add water then they swells and if we uh, dry these soils uh, uh, they 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 become uh, they condense so uh, this property is called as uh, the porous characteristic that is temporary now if we recall uh, you recall the uh, structure of montmorillo night then you will find that here this is t tetrahedral shapes this is octahedra and these are the tetrahedra so t o t okay so 2t and 1o so this is a 2 is to 1 type uh, clay and this is one layer this is another layer and like this the other layers will be present in this montmorillo night and in between these two layers you will find water molecules and uh, these cations like calcium and sodium ions okay so uh, this when we uh, add the water to this clay then these layers they move apart so that they will increase the gap between these two layers and water molecule can come into this interlayer space so this swells now the these cations they uh, easily exchange with the other cations and if we dry this montmorillo night then the, they come closer the layers they come closer and then the water molecule from uh, this interlayer space uh, they uh, evaporate and then the interlayer space will become the uh, smaller in size so uh, they become uh, uh, they become uh, condensed okay so they they so the clay will become hard so this is the temporary porosity of montmorillo night because of the addition of water they swells and uh, after drying they become hard so when we, at the wet condition it is a good uh, catalyst uh, and you will show uh, i will show you uh, that how and why it has good catalytic activity now we will see that why uh, the montmorillo night clay has acidic characteristic so why it is acidic in nature and due to its acidic nature it is a very good catalyst okay so now actually it has two kind of acidic character one is lewis acid lewis acid character and other is bronsted acid character so why it is having the lewis acidity character because you have seen that in the montmorillo night there are uh, aluminum ions and sometimes these iron ions they also they are also present at the edges of the crystal so these are the electron deficient species so they are responsible for its lewis acidity what are lewis acids lewis acids which are uh, electron deficient species so due to the presence of these kind of ions it has lewis acidic behavior uh, if we treat the clays Uh, having na plus and ca2 plus ion actually these clays are already having the sodium and calcium ion in the interlayer space and if we treat these uh, clays with alcl3 then these sodium and calcium ion they can be replaced by this al3 plus thus it will increase the lewis acidity of the clays so we generally prepare the acidic clays so we can uh, prepare acidic clays by exchange of the uh, sodium and calcium cations that are present at the interlayer space and thus uh, due to pre uh, presence of these ions it becomes uh, acidic in nature and that is lewis acidic nature of the montmorillo night clays now if you see the bronsted acidity or bronsted acidic behavior of uh, these uh, montmorillo night clays then you will find that due to dissociation of metal coordinated water molecules present in the interlayer space uh, it uh, has bronsted acidic behavior it shows bronsted acidic behavior so sometimes the water molecules they are associated with the metals so that metal coordinated water molecules 
they dissociate and gives H plus ions. And due to that H plus ions, because they can easily release the H plus ions, so it has bronsted acidic behavior also. So this is the water molecule that is coordinated to the metal that is present at the interlayer space of Montmorillonite clay. And when this metal coordinated water molecule dissociates, it gives H plus ion. So this is species because it can easily uh, gives rise to H plus ion. So it is bronsted acid. So the Montmorillonite clay, it behaves as bronsted acid also. And uh, the, uh, if, we, if we add some chromium ion, in the interlayer space through the exchange of sodium and calcium ions then it will increase the bronsted acidic character of the clays. So treatment of clays with acid can also increase the over, overall acidic nature of the clays. So if we treat the Montmorillonite clay with the acid its total acidity including Lewis and bronsted acidic character will can be increased. These Montemorillo night clays can act as green catalyst. You know uh, the green chemistry, about the green chemistry. Uh, there are 12 rules of green ke chemistry. So among these, uh, some of the rules, they have been followed by Montemorillo night and it can act as a green catalyst. Green catalyst without affecting the uh, environment ad, uh, adversely it acts as a catalyst so it is a green catalyst why it is a green catalyst uh, so it has some properties that are uh, under the uh, green uh, chemistry rules so it is a green catalyst it is very soft to handle it is reusable Re reusable clay it is re reusable because it is heterogeneous in nature. Easy to handle, no toxic effects, inexpensive because it can easily isolate it from the soil also. And if we we can also uh, uh, prepare Montmorillonite with some acids, but among the other catalysts that are the metal catalysts, the heterogeneous catalysts are. Uh, uh, sometimes the palladium or platinum catalysts that are very expensive metals. So this is very inexpensive catalyst and it promotes atomic economy. So one of the rule of the green uh, chemistry is atomic economy. So it registers and promotes the atomic economy. So it is a green catalyst. Number second is they provide large surface area. So surface area is the prerequisite for the heterogeneous catalyst. So it has the, uh, we have already studied that it has uh, about 600 to 800 surface area. So it is having a very large surface area. It has very low activation energy. So it is another important point of uh, catalyst. Environmentally friendly. No toxic effect. So it is environmental friendly. You can easily handle without any care. Taking any care. It is recyclable. So it is economically efficient. Recyclable uh, material is uh, this Montemorillonite clay then it is easily recoverable because it is heterogeneous in nature. Eco-friendly, that is eco-friendly again, it cannot affect the uh, any living uh, things on the environment. Uh, it is a natural kind of substance, so it is eco-friendly, non-toxic substance. Natural things, they are generally they are non-toxic, eco-friendly, non-corrosive. No corrosive effect of these clay okay and most important thing is that many acid catalyzed reactions can be easily catalyzed by clays because this clay is having acidic nature okay so if any organic synthesis that can be done under 
the acidic conditions like if we are using H2SO4, HCl, HNO3 or Lewis acids like AlCl3, FeCl3, TiCl4 for any organic synthesis. So, because of its prostate and Lewis acidic nature, it can be easily used to replace these acids which are very corrosive in nature. So, this Montmorillon night clay can act as catalyst at the uh, for the reactions where the reactions they are carried out in presence of Brostes acids and Lewis acids. I think you can understand uh, this point for the catalytic process of Montmorillon night clay. The Montmorillon night clay acts as catalyst because a variety of organic reactions that are catalyzed by the Brostate acids and Lewis bases like this, these can be, these kind of reactions, they can be easily undertaken in the presence of Montmorillo clay because it is also having the Brostate acid and Lewis acid character. So, because this uh, this uh, Montmorillo is eco-friendly, non-toxic, non-corrosive, environmentally friendly, recyclable, recoverable and these Brostate acids, they have toxic effects and side effects. They may also produce some side products. So, the use of Montmorillonite in place of these Brostate acids and Lewis acids can, uh, can uh, uh, be a, a step towards the green synthesis. So, these are the different reactions, catalytic reactions which are catalyzed by these Montmorillonite clays. These are ether formation, ester formation that is esterification, anhydride formation. The other reactions are dial elder readdition, rearrangement reactions, pyrolytic elimination and oxidation reduction reaction. So, these are the different organic reactions which can be catalyzed by the Montmorillonite clays. In place of, we can use this Montmorillonite clays in the place of Brostate acids and Lewis acids that are corrosive, uh, non, uh, they are toxic so that the, uh, the synthesis becomes green. So, we will discuss about the first kind of reactions that are catalyzed by the uh, Montmorillonite clay uh, that are ether formation. Okay. So, the ether formation is the reaction that are occurring due to the Brostate acid characteristic of the Montmorillonite clays. Here you will find that the ether can be generated from olefins. So, this method is different from that of Williamson synthesis. Uh, uh, and here we are using the uh, olefins for synthesizing the uh, ethers in presence of you can see this Montmorillonite clay and this uh, Montmorillonite clay has been modified and it becomes Al3 plus kind of Montmorillonite is presence of some solvent that is N-hexane at 95 degree centigrade it can form asymmetrical ether. So, this reacts with this olefin and or the one uh, carbon atom uh, the OH uh, OR will bind. So, this is an asymmetrical type ether and uh, this process can also helpful in synthesizing the symmetrical kind of ether. So, here also the olefin is reacting with the methanol in presence of any kind of M3 plus ion maybe it is, it may be Fe3 plus Montmorillonite clay in presence of dioxin and at 60 degree centigrade it can produce again asymmetrical type ether. So, this uh, ether uh, can be prepared with the help of olefins, reaction of olefins with the alcohol in presence of Montmorillonite clay and the synthesis of asymmetrical ether can take place. So, this method is far superior to the conventional Williamson's synthesis of ethers that can easily uh, un, uh, can undertaken 
in the uh, uh, in the presence of montmorillonite clay the ether can also be synthesized from primary alcohol so the primary alcohol can synthesize the symmetrical kind of ether in presence of aluminium montmorillonite clay so here the uh, the uh, montmorillonite clay catalyzes the reaction for the ether formation both kind of ethers can be synthesized asymmetrical as well as symmetrical now the ethers can also undergo certain addition reactions in presence of the montmorillonite clay so k10 is an acidic acid treated montmorillonite clay so it is the name a commercial name of montmorillonite clay that is treated with the acids so this is acidic clay actually so uh, uh, these uh, ethers can show addition reaction in presence of this montmorillonite clay so this is an enol ether enol ether in which you are so uh, seeing that ether and one double bond is there so uh, this alcohol can be added uh, as Uh, the or group can be added to this double bond and this is a addition kind of reaction now the second kind of reaction is you can again see uh, that in this uh, enol ether uh, the addition reaction can easily takes place in presence of montmorillonite clay the previous reaction addition reaction was of enol ethers now the addition reaction of silyl enol ethers so these silyl uh, silyl enol ethers they also show addition reactions with the alpha beta unsaturated uh, compounds ketones and esters this is a michael addition reaction so uh, in this silyl enol ether the addition of this alpha beta unsaturated ketone or ester can takes place in presence of montmorillonite clay so here the montmorillonite clay will uh, this uh, catalyze this kind of michael addition reaction so you can see that this montmorillonite clay clays actually they are natural compounds they they are inexpensive and in their presence various organic synthesis can takes place the second kind of reactions that are catalyzed by the clays they are esterification reactions or the ester formation in the conventional uh, ester formation reactions there were two methods for synthesizing the esters one is the conversion of carboxylic acid to first to the acid chloride and then that acid chloride can be treated with the alcohol in presence of bases okay so during this transformation during the formation of acid chloride reagents like socl2 and pcl5 they are used uh, for the reactions and uh, the second method is the heating uh, the carboxylic acid with the alcohol in presence of some dehydrating agents like sulfuric acid phosphoric acid silica gel so these um, compounds like socl2 pcl5 this uh, sulfuric acid phosphoric acid they are very corrosive and extremely polluting substances so that are replaced by the montmorillonite clays and now uh, in the presence of montmorillonite clays the carboxylic acid can react with the olefin it can react with the alkyl halide it can react with the alcohols or phenols to synthesize the esters so esterification becomes very easy without that is free from the toxic chemicals in the presence of acid treated montmorillonite clays this carboxylic acid can reacts with the olefin so carboxylic uh, carboxylic acid with olefin in presence of acid treated montmorillonite clays it is useful for synthesis of esters and here you will find that uh, this is a kind of intramolecular esterification in presence of aluminum uh, treated montmorillonite clay so this kind of uh, esters can be prepared with the help of uh, montmorillonite clay the other methods are including the reaction of carboxylic acid with alkyl halide so this carboxylic acid when reacts with alkyl halide in presence of this acid catalyzed montmorillonite at certain temperature then it can produce ester 
and this carboxylic acid can also react with alcohol or phenols uh, this acetic acid with alcohols and phenols it is the conventional method but in presence of the dehydrating agents but this is a, a reaction that is catalyzed by the montmorillon night clays uh, so this becomes very easy that the uh, carboxylic acid react with the phenol or it can react with the uh, the uh, this is the uh, this is the acid uh, this is the alcohol okay c6h5choh so in presence of this this is the alcohol and this is the phenol so on reaction with this alcohol this carboxylic acid they can produce the esters but in presence of this montmorillonite not in the presence of dehydrating agents like uh, sulfuric acid that is corrosive and uh, uh, that are very extremely polluting in nature then the third kind of reactions that are catalyzed by these montmorillonite is the anhydride formation okay so this is again a dehydrating kind of reaction that occurs in the presence of acids dehydrating agents so here this occurs in presence of montmorillonite clay where you will find that cyclic anhydride with five or six carbon uh, dicarboxylic acid uh, can be used to form this anhydride okay so this there here the n may be 3 or 4 so that it becomes a 5 or 6 member dicarboxylic acid so after dehydration of uh, this dicarboxylic acid in the presence of montmorillonite clay and some uh, these uh, solvents like toluene the anhydride can be formed so this is again the formation of anhydrides in presence of this montmorillonite clay one most important process that is Diels Elder addition and this Diels Elder addition is due to the Lewis acid characteristic of the Montmorillonite clay and these uh, the 2 plus 4 kind of Diels Elder addition is thermally allowed cyclo addition process and it generally does not occur spontaneously in the all dienes and dienophiles it is a very slow process but in presence of montmorillonite clay the two main criteria or the two main uh, the two main important applications of the montmorillonite in the dial elder reaction are they the reactions become very fast the reactions are very slow generally but in presence of montmorillonite clay they become very fast and the other one is the endo to exo ratio can be changed in presence of montmorillonite clays because it depends the formation of endo and exo ratio uh, the products ratio depends upon the interlayer spacing the narrower interlayer spacing generally it favors exo isomer why because this exo isomer is more compact in nature as compared to the endo isomer so at the narrower places the exo isomers generally form so if the uh, montmorillonite clay is having the narrower gap narrower interlayer space then exo isomer will be formed and if the gap is larger then uh, endo isomer can be formed so these are the two selectivity to main selecti uh, selectivity actually in terms of endo and exo ratio and the reaction uh, rate will be fast in presence of montmorillonite clay so this is the 2 plus 4 cycloaddition dial silder reaction so you will find two products can be formed this is exotype and this is endotype and this exotype uh, uh, the isomer is more compact so in in presence of uh, uh, montmorillonite clay that has narrower gap the exo product will be formed uh, in higher amount as compared to the endo product and if we take the montmorillonite clay with the little gap then endo product will be more as compared to the exo product so this uh, reaction becomes selective in the presence of different kinds of montmorillonite clays the fifth kind of reactions are the rearrangement reactions and then these, these rearrangement reactions may include the isomerization or the uh, 
rearrangement reactions okay so uh, this is due to the prostate and lewis acidic character of the montmorillonite -Mont clays both acidic characters they they play a, in an equal role in the catalytic processes so the diels elder reactions generally they are uh, they occur due to the interlayer gap the ratio depends upon the interlayer gap so uh, they were more affected by the lewis acidic character while these rearrangement reactions they are affected by both type of acidic characters prostate as well as lewis acid character so uh, the uh, isomerization of n alkenes to the branched chain alkenes can occur in presence of clays and that are generally pilaired clays which will we which we will discuss in the next lecture so this is the work of generally pilaired clays that is isomerization of n alkenes to the branched chain alkenes the other kind of reaction is the isomerization of alpha pinene so this alpha pinene pinene can isomerize to this camphene in presence of montmorillonite clays so this is a kind of isomerization reaction which is catalyzed by the green catalyst that is montmorillonite clay this is a kind of uh, rearrangement reaction uh, that is pinacol pinacolone reaction in which you can find that the uh, either the methyl or uh, phenyl group they can rearrange or they can uh, uh, go to the position uh, adjust uh, go to the adjacent carbon atom in tertiary 1 to glycol uh, compound so in this case this methyl or phenyl group they uh, they can migrate uh, to the carbon uh, to the adjacent carbon in tertiary 1 to glycol so uh, this this uh, generally occurs in presence of acid so this can also catalyze uh, by the montmorillonite clays uh, this is structure 1 it can be generated by the migration of this ch2 group to this adjacent carbon atom you can find that this ch3 group and uh, shift here then one ch3 is uh, uh, there and uh, this phenyl group is there one ch3 will also transfer so two ch3 group and one phenyl group and one phenyl group will remain as such and in the second product you will find that this uh, phenyl group can migrate so this will migrate here so that there will be two phenyl and one methyl group and one methyl group will uh, there with this carbon atom so there are two phenyl group and one methyl group so this is a kind of pinacol pinacolone reaction where the migration of phenyl or uh, this methyl group can take place at the adjacent carbon atom of the tertiary one to glycol that generally catalyzed by the acids so uh, this can also be catalyzed in presence of montmorillonite clay the next reaction is uh, the pyrolytic elimination and in this pyrolytic uh, elimination the esters in presence of acid uh, they pyrolytically eliminate this ester group and convert into the olefin and generally the conventional uh, pyrolytic elimination it occurs at more than 400 degree centigrade but in presence of montmorillonite clay the temperature reduced to about 150 degree centigrade and pyrolytic elimination can easily occur in presence of montmorillonite clay so, so it has the uh, advantage over the acid that is conventional method and can be easily achieved at 150 degree centigrade by refluxing in presence of xylene. Then the other kind of reaction is oxidation addition reaction. And you will find that uh, the uh, clays like clay fan and clay cop in presence of uh, hexane, uh, if it reflux the uh, alcohols, that can easily uh, oxidized to ketones or aldehydes so primary alcohol can be oxidized to the aldehydes and the uh, secondary alcohol they can be oxidized to the uh, ketones what are actually the clay fan and clay cop so this clay fan is actually when we treat the k10 k what is k10 k10 is the acid catalyzed montmorillonite clay so if we uh, treat this K10 clay with the ferric nitrate then it is called as clay fan and when we treat this K10 clay with the copper nitrate then it is known as clay cop. So these clay cop and clay fan they are excellent 
oxidizing agents for alcohols and thio compounds so in the presence of these kind of clays the uh, thio compounds can oxidize easily and the alcohols they can be oxidized easily so they are good oxidizing agents so oxidation can be done in presence of clay fan and clay cup thus in conclusion we can say that the clay minerals like montmorillonite because the montmorillonite is having the expansion capacity uh, it acts as a green uh, and heterogeneous catalyst it has high cation exchange capacity it swells it has expansion capacity it is non toxic and very uh, uh, low cost material so it can catalyze a variety of organic reactions like uh, you have seen that Uh, like uh, ether formation esterification anhydride formation diels elder reaction rearrangement reactions pyrolytic elimination and oxidation reactions uh, generally these can also be obtained by modification or incorporating different metal cations or molecules or complexes in the interlayer spaces of the montmorillonite clay so we can modify the clay and uh, this modified clay uh, it becomes very interesting catalyst uh, because it is eco friendly environmentally friendly and very cheap kind of process so this is all about the clays and the clays catalyzed reactions that are uh, uh, useful for organic synthesis so thank you very much